of us have to declare that we have the victory. Walk it out. Talk it out. Stomp your feet. Clap your hands. You clear the airways. What the enemy is not counting on is if he shuts down one part of you that you will utilize the other. You have power in your hands. You have power when you just rock. You've got power when you stomp your feet. Exercise your power. Get your victory back. You don't have to settle for depression. Tell somebody, you don't have to settle. Enough is enough. I stepped on the cruise ship the day before I started having chest pains. Had chest pains so bad getting on the ship. The enemy said, go to the hospital instead of getting on the ship. I turned and said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. That's a women's conference. And God already told me to be on this ship. I'm not missing this. My chest hurt me the entire time until the cruise was over. Till a week later, but I was determined if I have a heart attack, I'm having a heart attack doing the work of God. Now, I'm not asking you to be as brazen as I am, but that's where my faith will carry me. Pastor McGill said on the ship, she said, I called ahead and I thought with all the hurricane and everything that Dr. Rosie would, she said, one of my members asked this, Dr. Rosie going to cancel the cruise? And Pastor McGill responded, you know, Pastor Rosie got that crazy faith. <laughs> She's not canceling anything. I just read the hurricane that's clearing the way before we went out. It came a week before. I thought that just meant God's clearing the way. I was certain that if God is sailing with you, and I'm provoking, I'm begging, I'm pleading with many of you, start standing on what God said in the face of opposition. Regardless of what comes up, tell what came up what God said. Use the word. Jesus used the word on the devil. You've got to use the word. You need more of it since he was the word made flesh. Tell your circumstances what the Lord said. Okay. I hope by the time I finish it that I've convinced somebody. Apostle Paul said to Pastor Timothy. This is the ascension gifts talking. The apostle told the pastor. You had prophecy spoken over your life before you ever got in this spot. Before you became a pastor, before you're doing what you're doing, there was a prophetic word, a word from the mouth of God spoken over your life. Now, this is what I want you to do. Instead of just whining, I want you to take what I said and fight. Tap somebody and say, take what the Lord said and fight with it. Now, if you don't know what he said, you don't have a chance of winning. Ten hindrances to the prophetic. This morning, we're going to talk about the ten hindrances to the prophetic. Second Kings, the 13th chapter, the first one we're going to talk about hindrances to your prophetic is your actions. Your actions can hinder your prophecy. Word, your prophecy, a word that's given to you by the inspiration of God that fits individually you. A word from the Logos, from the Bible, a word from the mouth of God concerning you that was tailor-made for you. It was given by the inspiration of God. And what can hinder that word? Your actions. 2 Kings 13 chapter 15 through the 19th verse. How you act. Tell somebody act right. Don't hinder your own word. I remember the last prophetic word that Bob Jones gave me before he left the earth realm, my last mentoring experience. In Athens, Georgia, Devin and I were sitting there and he said, "Huh, nobody can hinder you but you. Sometimes the only person the enemy can use against you is you. It's a dreadful thing when you put your knife to your own throat and cut your own throat. What do you do to keep your word from coming to pass? Got it? Elisha, here is this prophet that receives Elijah's mantle. Elisha, Elijah's on his sickbed, getting ready to die. So it makes uh, a 
sense to me or it gives a greater emphasis that it's like his this dying decree or his dying prophecy my last prophecy this is so important that i'm about to leave this earth that i'm going to take time to give you a word from the lord he's on a sick bed and he's talking to this king he says get a bow and some arrows and he did so he followed the first couple of actions he got the bow got the arrow then he says take the bow in your hand your prophetic word has specific details. Say specific. There are specific things that if you omit, you can hinder your own prophecy. Take it in your hand, not in your foot. Take it in your hand, not in your arms. Take it in your hand, not pass it to your armor bearer. Take the bow in your hands, he said, to the king of Israel. Now, the king could have had a conceited attitude that I'm king and you're just a prophet. Sometimes you miss the prophetic word and you hinder your own prophecy because you're too caught up on yourself. That you felt like they weren't important enough to give you a word. If Israel couldn't hear Samuel as a little boy, the heavens had been set up, shut up for 400 years. They would have missed what God was saying because God spoke to a little boy. If Balaam couldn't hear jackass, dumb ass, the Bible says, he would have been slayed by an angel because God sent it through a donkey. Watch your attitude when God sends a word through somebody that you feel don't outrank you. Oh, I felt the labor pains on that. When he had taken it, Elijah put his hands on the king's hands. Open the east window, he said, and he opened it. There was a specific direction that he had to shoot in. Do you see all these directions? Shoot, Elijah said, and he shot. The Lord's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory over Arman, Aram. Elijah declared, you will completely destroy the Armenians at Apex. Now watch this. You will completely destroy your enemy. It's the word of the Lord. You heard it? You heard me say it? Say it with me so you can hear it as well. Then said he, take the arrows and Elijah told him, strike the ground. He struck it and stopped. Now Elijah didn't tell him how many times. He just said strike the ground. The man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have defeated who? And completely destroyed it. But now you were defeated only three times. Now the initial word was you would completely destroy them. He hindered his own prophetic word through his passive attitude. His gesture, doing just enough for the prophet to get out of his face. I would, if the Lord said, turn around, I would turn around like I'm a dancer. Now, I would do that even if I couldn't dance. Except some of y'all would have to come up here and preach afterwards. But if the Lord said, put a turn on it, put a praise on it, I would tap the place until he said, that's enough, take your seat. Sometimes you did just enough to hinder your own prophecy. Somebody else about to birth this thing. I keep hearing these labor pains. Your actions is a hindrance. God is reigniting your dreams and giving you the tools to aid you in prospering because of your dreams. Dr. Roger has completed the God of My Dreams workbook and textbook you can order today. For your donation of any amount, you will receive today's message on CD. For your donation of $50 or more, you will receive a God of My Dream textbook and workbook. For your donation of $75 or more, you will receive the God of My Dreams textbook and workbook, along with the God of My Dreams pocket journal and a God of My Dreams mug. To place your order, contact B.Y. Rosier Ministries staff at 850-769-5442 or email us your request at vyrosierministries at gmail.com. You may also place your order securely on PayPal. Thank you for supporting Let the Prophet Speak and helping us reach the nations. The fulfillment of the dream of your own office, your own practice.
I mean, if you weren't sharing it with anybody else, that was your practice. And it was a million dollar practice. You were making the money. People that started way ahead of you that never thought, CPA, hmm, that I could have my own practice. The certified public accountant. That you'll have a reputation. Oh, she's good. She's a new kid on the block, but she's good at what she does. She knows her stuff. He's already recruiting clients for you while you're working for somebody else. Isn't that great? Hallelujah. And for me, here's the best thing as a mother. When I look back the second time, I saw these arms, and these arms are wrapped around Stephen. And I can hear the Lord say, I'm holding him in my arms. When you can't hold him, you said, I wish I could put him back in my womb and keep him there. Good God Almighty. I can see him holding him. And he said, for Jackie's sake, because you said, God, I can't have him in prison. I just can't do it. God, this will kill me. And you haven't been one that, you said, Lord, I know he's been wrong, but show me mercy. When he doesn't know to ask for mercy. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Frustration. Be careful that out of your frustration, you do not hinder the prophetic word that the Lord gave you. I'm sick of this. I don't want him to tell me another time about a husband. And out of your frustration, it left your mouth and God said, okay. And now you're saying, why can't I get a word? You said, don't tell me another word about it. If that's all God has, keep it. Oh, glory to God now. So therefore, who he had for you, he kept them. Careful with your mouth what you say. Careful with your ears what you hear. You better be careful. Out of frustration. Numbers, the 20th chapter, 7th through the 12th verse. Ready? Read it with me. The Lord said to Moses. Who was talking to Moses? Is this not a word from God? Yes. Take. Now wait, so Moses followed God's instructions, and he did what? He took the staff from the Lord's presence, just as he commanded. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, Listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Hold it right there. Did God tell him to tell those people, Listen, you rebels? the times God had given you a specific word, told you how to deliver it, and you reframed it and quoted it according to your frustrations. And you thought it was just affecting other people, but it hindered your prophetic word. He struck the rock, then So he struck the rock twice when God said, speak to the rock. Let me show you a curious turn that God made here. In Exodus, the 17th chapter, we don't need to go there, the 6th verse. Just write it down for your notes. 17th chapter, the 6th verse, he told Moses, strike the rock. But in Numbers, the 20th chapter, and the 7th to the 12th verse, he said, speak to the rock. The word that worked for you the last time. God may decide to do something different this time. You can't go back on, I like striking it. 
because that made me feel good and upset God. God was upset with Moses because it showed doubt and he wanted him to move in faith. It also gave the people the impression that Moses was doing the work and not God. What are you doing that's bringing glory to you and taking the glory from God? Specific instructions. As a result of Moses' actions, Moses and Aaron were not allowed to go into the promised land. They brought pe the people to the promised land. He escorted, told Moses, go up on the mountain. Look at where I would have taken you. Take a look at what you were supposed to have. And I'm not letting you go in. Because you altered that prophetic word. Hindrance to the prophetic. Frustration. What did he do without her? Frustration. You have to be careful that you don't allow people to frustrate you. You cuss them out and God's finished with you. It is about accountability. God was depending on you to act right. You're a daughter of destiny. You're a son of destiny. What he let somebody else get away with, he will not let you. How fair was that to make Moses miss out after those people had gotten on Moses' nerve time and time again? They had said to Moses, you brought us out here to die, to kill us and our livestock. You should have left us in Egypt. They forgot they were in bondage and he didn't put a gun to their head. They wanted to be free. And God didn't wipe them out or tell them, in other words, Caleb and Joshua went in, but he had to miss out because he misrepresented God. Throw up those hands and say, God save me. Don't let me do it. God is reigniting your dreams and giving you the tools to aid you in prospering because of your dreams. Dr. Roger has completed the God of My Dreams workbook and textbook you can order today. For your donation of any amount, you will receive today's message on CD. For your donation of $50 or more, you will receive a God of My Dream textbook and workbook. For your donation of $75 or more, you will receive the God of My Dreams textbook and workbook, along with the God of My Dreams pocket journal and a God of My Dreams mug. To place your order, contact B.Y. Rosier Ministries staff at 850-769-5442 or email us your request at vyrosierministries at gmail.com. You may also place your order securely on PayPal. Thank you for supporting Let the Prophet Speak and helping us reach the nations. And the Lord's going to make you the father that you didn't have. He's going to cause you to be the father that you always wanted. He said, I'm going to help you to be that. Well, you said, if I had just had this, he's going to show himself the all-breasted one in your life and show you that you had me. And more, the bulk of your teaching, you're going to teach more. Get ready in January because I see more Wednesday nights with you sharing. You're going to teach. You're going to share. It's going to be revelatory knowledge, but out of your pain. In fact, you had a quick vision of that in your mind. When Lindsay was sitting there, you went into a vision. And you started seeing yourself. When Lindsay was sharing about his childhood and what he went through, you started seeing yourself. And you decided, I don't, I don't think, I'm not going to tell him that. I'm not going to tell him I see myself doing this. But God is telling on you that that was a setup to show you that I'm going to use you to help a lot of young men that have had bad breaks in life and they've gone through things that they never would have gone through had their father to coach them. You're going to coach many. You're going to be the one that will be the life raft. 
the life rope to many individuals. You're going to pull them out. You're going to keep them out of the prison system. There are people you see incarcerated and you're thinking, if I had met them years ago, I could have kept them out of this. Minor offenses. They just didn't have anybody to talk sense in their head. You're in the right place still. You were wondering, Lord, I need to get out of here. But there are people you're contacting and reaching that you don't know that you're contacting and reaching. God has you as a witness for him. You're doing the work of the ministry in the marketplace. Failure to study and understand the word. First Kings, the 13th chapter, 20th through the 26th verse. Failure to study. Failure to study and understand the word. First Kings, 13th chapter, 20th through the 26th verse. Let's read. Now, this is the old prophet talking to his sons, saddled the donkey for me, and he rode after the man of God. Okay, this is two prophets, an old prophet, a young prophet. The older prophet is trying to get the younger prophet to come home with him to eat. God has said to the younger prophet, deliver this and don't go eat with anybody. Don't go and drink with anybody. Go right back out. He already had instructions. Here's the dangerous thing. You've got a prophetic word from the Lord. You have a prophetic mantle or calling on your life. You allow somebody else just because they have the title prophet to turn you from what you know God told you to do. I needed to go there because... The religious, those individuals, I got, but this prophet told me, sometimes it's so gratifying to your flesh that it was easy for you to modify what God said. Come and eat. Pleasure. He's calling me a man of God. He recognizes me. He sees my anointing. She sees my anointing. So it's easy for you to turn and do something God didn't tell you to do because the person gave you swelling accolades. And the man of God said, Now he's quoting what the Lord has said when you get home. Look at the whole chapter. He's quoting what the Lord told him. He told the old prophet, I can't. Look how long it took him to change his mind. Next. He told him what the Lord told him. Keep going. Wait a minute. Look at the fluff. He added to that thing, an angel visited me. I know you got a word from the Lord, but an angel showed up last night and told me the Lord would say further. The old prophet answered, I too am a prophet, as you are. And an angel said to me, by the word of the Lord, bring him back to your house so he may eat bread and drink water. But he was lying to him. Let me show you how God felt about God didn't do anything to that old prophet for lying to him. It was all about your test. That's why you can't blame other people. God, they made me do it. But the Lord is saying, but I gave you the instructions. You gave them the power to lead you astray. I'm holding you accountable. So, so that young prophet went with him. All it took was to come an angel told him. This is where God has a sense of humor. I say, you are so funny. Have you ever been asking God to help you with something and he sent somebody to you with that exact same problem? You had to look up and say, this is not funny. <laughs> the Lord just asked you. And you have helped the person. And you turn around and say, where's my help? When you really want to say, get out my face. I'm having a problem myself. He cried. 
The old prophet started prophesying to the young prophet once he gets him in his house. This is what the Lord says. You have defied the word of the Lord and have not kept the commandment the Lord gave you. Not I have tricked you. You came back and ate bread and drank water in the place where he told you not to eat or drink. Therefore, your body will not be buried in the tomb of your ancestors. Throw up your hands and say, help me pass my test, God. When the man of God... Now, wait a minute. Who can finish a meal after that word? Something wrong with you. They're telling you you've disobeyed God and you can still eat? I don't want that kind of food. It's kryptonite. I don't want that kind of food. And? Now this is a miracle. A lion kills him and that won't eat him. And he didn't attack the donkey. God commanded the beast eat the woman that I told not to go with the old prophet. Don't go in that city. I don't care if a prophet told you. An angel told you. I said don't go. Now that you will believe this next prophetic word since you didn't believe the first one, here's another word. You won't be buried with your ancestors. You may get by, but you won't get away. It's not a simple thing to just disobey God. Here's a miracle. The lion, some people who passed by saw the body lying there with the lion standing beside the body, and they went and reported it. Oh, the prophet lived. Keep going. And when the prophet who had brought him back from his journey heard of it, he said, it is the man of God who defied the word of the Lord. He knew. The old man believed the word of the Lord. The old man was on assignment by God too. See if you can get him to disobey me. Then God used the old man again to give him a word you shouldn't have disobeyed. Oh, amen. Scare, should scare you straight. The Lord has given him over to the lion. Who gave him over? The Lord. Which has mauled him and killed him as the word of the Lord had warned him. Hymns to the prophetic, failure to study and understand your word. 